Now, a lot of the fans of the Hannibal TV are uh, interested still in Beyond the Mat. And uh, Hannibal did a review, I believe it was about a year ago, of of the film. And it, it's, it's really taken on um, an iconic sort of uh, status in the uh, internet wrestling community. What, what I'd like to ask you about your involvement in, in that, aside from um, your uh, match with Tony Jones, who we had scheduled to come on the podcast, we hope to get him back again, but what was that, that backstage environment like uh, in the height of the, the Attitude Era? And it seemed like you really got over with the execs, especially your finisher, and were you were you surprised that you know there there appeared to be some momentum for both you and Tony after that, and then uh, it didn't exactly turn out the way that uh, you thought it would? <clears throat> no. So interestingly, um, I was very skeptical of my tryout. Um, I had had so many tryouts with WWE, and I know the way the tryouts go. Here's how they go. Um, or how they used to go. I haven't had one in a long time, so I shouldn't say this. But here's how they used to go. If you have a tryout, they'll tell you you have 10 to 12 minutes, okay? And then about an hour before you go out, they'll tell you, hey, you only have about five minutes. And then up in the gorilla room, gorilla booth, they'll tell you, hey, you know what? We're going to cut that to about three minutes. And then when you get out there, they cut it right back to about two or one and a half, Okay. So that's the way tryouts work with, with that company. And when Beyond the Mat came along and Barry Blaustein said, hey, you know, we, we want to, you know, we're going to get you this tryout, yada, yada. I said, well, I'm not interested in doing it because um, I had already, I had already reached a point where I was just tired of like bullshit and I, I just, started asking for what I really wanted and, or I just was, wasn't interested in doing it. And so I told Barry, I said, I'm not really interested. I've had a lot of tryouts with WWE and I know the way it works. So I'm not interested in doing a tryout with them unless I get 10 minutes guaranteed. If I can get 10 minutes guaranteed, then I'll do the tryout. But other than that, no, I won't do it. So he went to them and they said, yeah, you, you can have the 10 minutes for the film, blah, blah, blah. So, even Jim Cornette assured me that I had 10 minutes. And then Tony and I, we, we go out there and we, I, they did the same thing. Gorilla, gorilla room. They start telling us, Oh yeah, you guys, we're going to have to cut it short. Probably going to be about five minutes, you know? And in my mind, I'm thinking, you know what? Fuck you. I was told 10 and I'm taking my 10 cause I don't give a fuck. I'm not even trying to get a job anymore. This is for a movie. And I already knew that WWE was never going to hire me. Uh, Vince didn't like me. I wasn't big. I wasn't tall. I should, I was shorter than Coco beware. I remember, I remember thinking, uh, so when I was a kid looking at the wrestling magazines, I would look and I would see, Oh, Coco beware is only five foot 10. Well, shit, I, I can be five foot 10, you know? Yeah, no, I wasn't even as tall as Coco. And, uh, so when Tony and I went out there, uh, the referee, after about two minutes into the match, the referee starts telling us, go home. And I had Tony in a headlock, and I looked up at the ref, and I just said, nope. And he was like, huh? <laughs> he was like, that doesn't happen. He was like, D didn't you hear me? Go home. And I said, oh, I heard you. But no, we're not going home. I said, I was told 10 minutes, and I'm taking it. And I said, that's, that's, that was the agreement. And – so Tony and I wrestled the rest of the match and I could hear at a point, I could hear Bruce Pritchard. He was yelling so loud into the referee's earpiece that I could hear him. And he was saying, tell him to go the fuck home. Does Modest know what the fuck go home means? Tell him to fucking go home. And cool as a cucumber, man. We finished the match and we did the, did the finish and the crowd fucking went crazy for it. So here's why I wanted the 10 minutes. I had a sneaky suspicion that I was going to be painted a certain way in the documentary. Just as I had a sneaky suspicion they were going to paint Roland 
a certain way in the documentary. Now, the way they painted Roland, that's 100% true. They didn't, they didn't paint him in a way that isn't true. But what they didn't show you is the full picture. They didn't show you what a kind person he could be. They didn't show you him taking me out to dinner because I didn't have money that week. You know, they didn't show you all the good things about Roland. They only highlighted the shitty promoter kind of cheesy, uh, you know, independent promoter thing. And that was an entertaining character and an entertaining story to tell. Um, just as when I was pulling the body thing out of, you know, the out of the van, I was no longer working at the mortuary during the filming of that film. No way. That was that I was working at the mortuary when they first interviewed me for the film. By the time they had do, done, started the, the filming, I was working at a place called Court Furniture. But that's not very interesting. Like, that's not a good story to tell. So they asked me, they said, well, hey, can we maybe talk to your old boss and just get us over there for a few little things of you moving a body bag around so that we can say that you're still working there? I was like, sure, that's no problem. So I already knew that this wasn't going to be like, it was going to be like all reality TV, not real. Um, it was going to be massaged and it was going to be, it was going to tell a story they wanted to tell. And then when I heard that Draws was going to get a tryout and that he was also going to be a part of this movie, I realized quickly that I was going to be the sad sack. I was going to be painted as the poor guy. He wasn't good enough. Him and Tony just couldn't pull it off, but draws did blah, 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 you know? And so I saw this story story that they were writing and I was like, you know what? I'm getting my 10 minutes because if I, if I have 10 minutes, no one can deny that I'm a star. If I have 10 minutes to show my craft, I'll win the crowd over, even though I'm nobody. Because at first, when we walked out, the crowd could give a shit. You know, like, you're nobody. But me and Tony, you know, started moving around, started doing our thing. And again, they really didn't care. But once we caught them, they were hooked into the story that we were telling. And they loved our match. And the, the fans popped to the finish as if I was somebody. Like, I was, I was a guy, you know. And um, so it changed the narrative of the documentary um, to where it looked like me and Tony had a shot, even though we never did get signed. Um, that was the only uh, reasonable thing to do. You couldn't have that reaction and then go, Mike and Tony just weren't good enough. You know, like, <laughs> you know, you got D'Lo Brown in the back saying, I'm stealing it. You know, mm -hmm. so, uh, yeah, and, and, and I, I loved being a part of the movie as well because um, everyone in the industry now knew who I was. So, for example, one of the big guys that I really always admired and loved and loved to watch wrestle was King Kong Bundy. He was one of my favorite big men. Um, one was his name, King Kong Bundy. It just sounds like a bad dude, man. And his look, he just, he had that stereotypical bully kind of look, you know, um, a walking and, condominium. What's that? A walking yeah. condominium as gorilla used to say hundred percent. And so I went and I wrestled the show back East somewhere and King Kong Bundy was on the show. And when I was walking in the locker room, I was thinking to myself, man, I, I really, I want to go up and shake his hand. I, I can't wait to shake his hand. I hope he doesn't think I'm a fucking Mark, you know? Cause like I am, I'm a Mark for this guy, you know, like I've, I really liked him my whole, my whole life. And, and uh, so I'm, I'm thinking about all this. And, and as soon as he sees me, he goes, Mike modest, he goes, holy shit. So like he already knew he had already seen the movie. And so he came up and he was laughing. He shook my hand and I was like, oh, wow, this is so cool that this guy that I've put up on this pedestal already knows who I am. 
and he's funny as hell. Like people that don't know him, uh, uh, Bundy's a really funny guy. He's got a great sense of humor. And he told me real serious. He gets a real serious look and he goes, Mike, can you do something very serious for me? And I was like, of course, man, what, you know, what do you need? And he goes, when you see Roland, would you tell him that he really inspired me? And I was like, yeah, how did he inspire you? And he goes, oh, his diet, his diet advice. He goes, the, the no eating of French fries. He goes, yeah, that's, that's valuable stuff. And he starts laughing his ass off. He's like, he's like, I'm, I'm going to start giving people diet advice. He goes, it's my new thing. He goes, I'm going to be King Kong Bundy, the dietitian. He goes, you know, like, so also Terry Funk, um, from that movie, uh, Terry Funk knew me and, and uh, I'm a huge fan of Terry's, you know, and, um, I got to ride with Terry Funk because he found out that Chris Candido and I were um, driving together. And um, Chris had some kind of issue where a rent a car, something bad happened to a rent a car. So he couldn't rent cars. So um, I would rent the car and then Chris would, you know, kick in some, some money or whatever. If there, if, if, if the company wasn't paying for it um, and uh so Terry Funk found out that we were riding together and he was like, Oh man, I like those guys. And so he came up and he was like, Hey boys, can I, can I, you know, ride along with you guys, you know? And to me, that was just awesome. You know, um, we got to the hotel and, and, uh, Terry Funk kind of got lost on the, on the elevator. <laughs> um, just a great guy, you know? And, uh, so yeah, the movie did amazing things for me in a lot of ways. Um, you know, it it, uh, it definitely made at least people in the industry all know who I was now. Absolutely. Did you get any heat from uh, Brother Love, or I guess it was Jr. who was um, head of talent relations when he came back, or was it? Yeah, when I when I went as soon as I walked back. Um, you know, behind the curtain, he was right there, fucking red faced, yelling at me. And he was like, you know, did you fucking hear me? And I was like, yeah, I heard you. I was told 10 minutes and I took 10. 